Coming up, we're going to be talking about what's happening at Universal Orlando in 2023 and so much more on this week's episode of the Diz Unplugged Universal Edition. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of the Dis Unplugged Universal Edition. I'm your host, Craig Williams, and today I'm joined alongside by my co-host, Rhino. Hello. Hello, Rhino. Happy New Year. How are you doing? I am doing pretty well. How are you? Oh, I'm doing fantastic. It is a brand new year. It's a brand new day, and I am very excited to be talking to you about Universal Orlando because it feels like it's been... The first time in forever that we're doing this. Uh, <laughs> okay, my bad. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I, I mean, I know it's not universal, but it felt like it was getting a little movie musical frozen right there for me. No, it was just I was trying to find a the perfect way to express my emotions because I'm so happy to be sitting here with you, having this conversation <laughs> with you. Of course, we'll talk a little bit about 2022 because we can't talk about what's to come in the future without talking about what we have left behind. Plus, we didn't do our end of the year episode where we we talk about like our favorite moments of 2022 with Universal. So that is obviously going to have to happen on this one. Uh, there's more. We're going to talk about some of the discounts you could take advantage of right now with Universal. And we are also going to talk about the news that Universal is taking another step forward in terms of uh, getting a SunRail station at the convention center. So that way you can get Ooh. to Universal's Epic Universe even easier than uh, you know other ways of transportation because it's, it's difficult to drive a car. And I don't believe you can fly a plane directly into a theme park yet yet i mean they tried with disney and stallport but one day one day i'm sure it'll be yeah. you know you just drop down by helicopter westworld style just pa- yeah i was gonna say like you you drop down like a swat team or a navy seal down yeah. on the on the those ropes that they come down on it's a it's the future of theme parks so uh we're gonna have that discussion and probably a lot of fun and we'll get to that in a second but before we do i need to remind you this is brought to you by dreams unlimited travel if you like our content and you want to support us please continue to book your universal vacations with dreams unlimited travel i got told uh this past week by uh, one of the owners of dreams unlimited travel our very beloved john magi that uh, we need more people booking universal so if you do like this show and you want to see it going then book vacations and if you don't then i guess just don't book vacations and we'll stop doing the show and it's Good, loud and clear message easy received. what's that yeah. i said message received loud and clear yeah so head over to dreams unlimited travel.com today to get a free no obligation quote on a universal vacation Okay, let's jump right into this, Rhino. And uh, we're again, we're talking about 2023 and what we have to look forward to this year at Universal. Uh, but I, I truly do believe we have to at least mention 2022 in that way uh, because uh, we couldn't get to 2023 without 2022. And there wasn't really a lot of highlights in 2022. So I feel like this year could potentially be a brighter spot. But I also don't want to be too harsh on the past year because, uh, you know, it was at least we did get one brand new opening with the uh, with, of course, Universal's great movie escape right at the the end of the year. But they they snuck it in. But beyond that, it was kind of a, a I don't want to say a weak year for Universal Orlando, but I, it was a lot harder for me to find excitement in visiting Universal last year. And I hate saying that because, you know, I, I love the parks and I still have a ton of fun uh, every time I'm there. And we always we always make the best of our days at Universal. But something about it, like it. it it felt like I didn't have anything to be like super excited about last year. Whereas this year, I don't, I'm, I'm feeling cautiously optimistic right now at this point. Oh yeah. I mean, I, yeah, it was, um, I think part of it being that we, you know, the emerging from a pandemic sort of a situation where, um, you know, it felt like, okay, business back to normal, but it's also like, we're still recouping from other stuff. And, um, it, it, 
you know, whereas like the year before, I think it was kind of that excitement of like, will they, won't they Halloween Horror Nights, you know, and then we got Halloween Horror Nights back and then this was the second year of it. And I think it was just kind of a little bit of a like, hmm, I think I liked last year better. And maybe it was because we didn't have it the year before or something, you know, or could just be a matter of opinion and taste, obviously, because I'm sure some for somebody out there, this was their favorite year. It always is. And yeah. that's good. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was a it was a good year. It just I think they've just had so many years where like it's like what you said. Yes, the escape rooms opened, but like escape rooms aside every year, I think for the last like five or six years, we've had an attraction open pretty consistently, whether they were good or not. It still had that kind of like buzz around it. And so this year it was kind of just like a very tepid, like, here we go. We're like back to normal and there's cool stuff to do and it's been fun. But didn't Jurassic World open? No, did that open in 2021? A Velocicoaster was 2021, if you can believe oh that. Oh my God, where does time even, that ride still feels brand new. I know. It, it does crazy. feel brand new. And, you know, obviously there's a lot of people out there who haven't experienced it yet. And uh, you're you're still coming to do it for the first time. I mean, uh, Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure has been open for years now. But the wait times for it are so, still so ridiculous. I mean, yeah. in, the, in the past week alone, it's like you open up the app and you're seeing 200 minute wait times, 300 minute wait times. And it's like, I don't I don't think that this is a mistake. I'm not going to go and find out about it but i'm also pretty sure it's not a mistake so uh you know i i have friends who have traveled and they're like yeah we still haven't still haven't done hagrid's yet just because of how busy it has always been and not wanting to take the time to wait in line so there's always something probably new for you at universal uh but definitely this year we are going to have a little bit of new in the summer and we've talked about it before it's the villain con attraction we'll get to Mm -hmm. it again but i i think i think that you know if you didn't travel last year in 2022 2023 at least if you're coming after that summer timetable you could definitely have a new experience and not even just at universal I, I will 100% lump Disney into it too, because, you know, Tron's going to be opening up in the spring. And so at that point, you have a marquee attraction opening at the Magic Kingdom. Universal is going to be opening a new attraction in the summer. Uh, so, you know, at, at, once you're getting into the summertime, I think I think there's a lot of freshness happening just in Orlando in general. And remember, it's, you know, it, there's very few people who just travel to one destination or the other. It, it's getting to the point now where there is a lot of crossover at least with the people who watch our shows and you know obviously uh give us feedback on that saying they're trying universal or they dipped their toes into it before and now they're going full-fledged um Mm -hmm. you know there is definitely it we see that going that route but at the end of the day you know it's we know you're also you, you kind of bouncing around orlando it's 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 hard it's hard to come to a vacation destination and only do one thing anymore at least in my opinion you know it's what I, I I couldn't imagine going to California and only going to Disneyland. I would it would drive me nuts knowing what else is available in Southern California that I'm not doing. Um, what is the timeline for Epic Universe? Is that still like they're like twenty twenty five? Twenty five. Okay, because I was going to say the the closer we get to that, I think the more like buzz and excitement there's going to be because you know there's that rumor that like eventually there'll be a preview center somewhere for this, and I think that'll be exciting and i don't know if that'll happen this year or next year or something but it's just like i i I just i feel like we've got we're we were i think in terms of that feeling you were having for 2022 i feel like it was the wave pulling back into the ocean right before it's about to like come back you know well and and that's the tough part is that there's a lot of small things that can start bouncing around right now that could get interesting i mean epic universe is going up fast i obviously am not flying in in helicopters and such over but of course God, bio reconstruct is always doing the lord's work with the helicopter photos and like just earlier before we were getting started i was looking at uh their photos of the the um the doling roller coaster that is mm-hmm. at epic universe that like really feels like it's taking shape i mean all the photos that are being posted uh from bio reconstruct show a theme park that is coming up super fast so uh universal you know, you can keep letting you can keep letting people on social media hype up the parks and, and go that that route. But I would love to see 
more and more of what's going inside Epic Universe uh, this this year in particular. And, you know, stuff is being moved around, too, because uh, the, the space that we've loved for the Tribute Store over and over again, right next to, to Mummy in New York, uh, it appears that the Holiday Store was the final time that it was going to be in there because now... Uh, it seems like I, I mean, I haven't been necessarily going and looking at uh, all the spaces and stuff at Universal. I'm just dipping my my toes back into the theme parks this week. But a uh, tribute store should be getting moved to Hollywood. And then like the Universal hmm. annual pass holder lounge is being moved to the Betty Boop store in Toon Lagoon. So there's all these places, uh, little places places and stores that are kind of switching around and that leaves the tribute store area open for something that it could be. It could just be that, you know, I I can't remember who said it and speculated. It could just be that they want that extra space back open for, uh, for overflow queue for mummy, because that's, I believe that's where it was before, but it's, it's a big space. You could, you know, preview center there, you know, well, the that space, I feel like they've been doing the tribute store. Like, yeah, the mummy was closed for I don't know, it was closed for a while, right? Like nine months or something like that. Yeah. And like, but like they've had tribute stores in there now for I don't know, two years, three years at this point in that queue, and have never had an issue, from what I can tell, visually from being in the park with queues and stuff like that. So it's weird that that would be now they want it for a queue that they don't need. But I guess maybe. Maybe it will be like like you said, if it if it is a preview center, maybe they'll do something similar to a tribute store. What's a preview center? It would just bum me out if the tribute store moved because it probably means it's also going to shrink in size. Mm. I OK, so the only thing I'll say with the tribute stores in terms of if it shrinks in size, I think it might be for the better. Uh, it, I, I'm not insulting the tribute stores at all, but it, uh, besides Halloween, I, I feel like with Christmas and Mardi Gras, they're starting. They we're like on the verge of running out of ideas with it. It's hard to keep it fresh when there's not as much to pull from. Where at least with Halloween Horror Nights, you know they can work with the theme, they can work with individual properties from that year's event. Uh, it just I feel like they have a little bit more room to work with Halloween versus the other ones. So if it means tighter stores for. For the other mm. holidays, then it might be a better thing. But I'm not. I'm not insulting the work that goes into it. They're still magnificent. It's just how many different takes on Mardi Gras can you do? And with Christmas, it feels like it's been the same one with you know just the, the overarching holiday festive themes and making sure that you sell Harry Potter merch in there. It like yeah. I, but again, small small little quibbles on that, but uh, that that's some of the things that are happening right now in 2023 at Universal that are uh, painting the picture for what could happen with the entire year, but let's jump into everything else that's happening too. Uh, January 16th is when Kid Zone is officially closing. They'll, so the last day of operation is the 15th, and that is, uh, you know, that's creeping into next week. So Rhino, I think we're going to have to go in the next couple of days here and we're going to have to go and uh, blanket it with photos and videos and we might have to resurrect one of our uh, one of our episodes where we we really decide if kid zone should be in the universal hall of fame oh I'm gonna yeah say no on this one yeah probably not <laughs> mr peekaboo maybe but yeah. oh, uh mr peekaboo yeah. i feel like is the uh who what's it, the museum curator for the hall yeah, of fame <laughs> If this was a night at the museum series of movies, he would end up being the Robin Williams of the whole area, probably yeah. the Teddy Roosevelt. Exactly. Um, <laughs> They're going to get to work, I'm sure, pretty much right away once it once it's closed, and we will have to see where it takes us. Uh, next up in January, something we don't really cover: uh, the Christian Rock Music Weekend, Rock the Universe. That's happening oh. January 27th to 29th. I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that love it. We just we don't cover it. So I'm not going to even pretend to be an expert on it. I, I went one time in all my years covering university, uh, Universal, and it was on a night that we basically just went after we were finished with work. And we're like, oh, we want to go ride Jaws. So we went in and rode Jaws and then just jumped back out. So I didn't really experience anything with it. I just can say I, I rode Jaws during Rock the Universe. That's very helpful for you when you're planning your uh, future vacations <laughs> to Universal, I'm sure. But right after 
right after Rock the Universe is the next event that will take up most of the spring at Universal. And that, of course, is Universal Mardi Gras running February 4th through April 16th. And right now, we don't have any of the fun details with the concerts and the themes and such. Uh, Of course, that will all be coming very soon. Last year, I I just looked it up before we started recording. Rhino, do you remember what, what day I said they announced the stuff last year? Uh, it, was it the 13th? You said, uh, no, you the 14th, I think. Okay. Because you were like, I don't know. And I was, because I would have thought, next Friday then. Yeah. Well, I, it would have been Friday because it would have been the 14th would have been a Friday last year. Oh, don't, don't mess with my mind like that. I don't know how calendars work. I can't, <laughs> I can't check them at all. But yeah, so uh, they typically always release the Mardi Gras information the second week of January. And so I would expect to see that information come uh, either next Thursday, Friday, potentially even the following Monday or Tuesday if they're a little late with it. Uh, But I expect a lot of the details to happen with that. Uh, Of course, it's a rock and party will happen every, every day. Plenty of food, beads, beads. What beads? Bees? 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 Okay. So many years of that dumb joke. And <laughs> yeah, but you, did you hear the episode of Smartlist where he, he, yes. um, Will yes, Arnett was making the joke, but Jason Bateman wasn't yep. paying attention. So nobody reacted. And I was like, oh God. <laughs> like, I know. Well, why weren't we there? Why don't they invite us on an yeah. episode where they talk to their celebrity friends? Makes no sense. I don't get it. Uh, I dream about it sometimes. Yeah, I know. I know. (laughs) When they have a contest where they're like, we're going to pick a normal person. Like we could be those normal people. Yeah. It it would be our, our thrust into stardom because there's not enough monotonous white people in the world in (laughs) show business right now. I'll tell you that much. Uh, That's for sure. But (laughs) uh, universal Mardi Gras. Yeah. Again, happening all the way through April. So that will, uh, that will satisfy your, your special fun this spring if you're coming to universal any other thoughts on that rhino no my dogs are barking yeah so that's good that's good uh then we're gonna we're gonna dip our toes into summer and right now i mean Obviously, we'll talk about the attraction in the summer, but uh, beyond that, the only thing else I really expect for the summer is I expect a summer food fest that's not really like heavily promoted again, but definitely uh, spread around in Universal Studios Florida where there's some updated food options for the summer. And, you know, they've done it the past two years now. And uh, it's it's just nice, again, having those seasonal menus kind of changing, especially going from Mardi Gras into, in, into the summer. It adds a little bit of a freshness. And then also, too, you know, it's not like you have to wait then forever for for Halloween Horror Nights to roll around with more food options. So, yeah, I, I, I don't see why they wouldn't continue doing it. They got the bars. They've got the food trucks. Just throw in summer options as well. But that's what I expect for the first part of the summer starting. And then, of course, the main thing in summer 2023, the newest attraction and land area in Universal Studios Florida, uh, all surrounded by the minions. And we have the Villain Con Minion Blast, which we talked about, I believe, on our final episode of 2022 with the Disunplugged Universal Edition, which, again, it's going to be an interactive moving walkway attraction set in the world of uh, the Minions movies. And uh, it's it, it will probably be a lot of fun. Again, we don't we haven't done it, so we can't tell you it's going to be fun and it's going to be worth booking a trip to Universal just for that. But it is a brand fresh new attraction uh, that took over the space of Shrek 4D. And of course, too, with it, it's it is Minions Land, so Minions Cafe is going to be coming in the space where there used to be the uh, Universal Studios Classic Monsters Cafe. So really, this area is getting a lot of love, and I, I mean, it's it's great for great for Universal Studios Florida because, as I've already said, you know, it, I'm not saying that it isn't a fresh park to visit, but it just right now I feel like it needs that. Needs that oomph after Islands of Adventure getting getting a lot of love for a couple of years in a row there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You excited? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Minions. <laughs> yeah, you know it. 
I haven't. I gotta watch the. I gotta watch the movie. I. I mean, I saw the first one. I haven't seen the second one yet, so I gotta watch it. Yeah. Um, but I'm excited because I think it's gonna bring an element of interactivity that I think will be fun. Um, it sounds. The description sounds interesting enough. Yep. Something where uh, you can walk on a on a thing and you're doing like a laser, not laser tag. I don't even know what the word is for those type of attractions, like a Men in Black or a Buzz Lightyear or so shooting. Like I don't know. The, yeah. So. Um, Something like that. I I like those sort of attractions, so I'm all, I'm like I'm interested. I think yep. it'll be fun. Listen, we'll see. It, as long as it's not web slinger style, and my arms aren't falling off. Oh, yeah, it feels like rubber bands at the end. I'm I'm okay with yeah. that. So yeah, give me the actual physical prop to hold, please. Yeah, but I do I do love a good web slingers. I will say that much. Uh, let's roll out of summer though. Again, that is a big thing, but we covered it so much in depth with our thoughts and feelings that uh, I really urge you to go back and watch or listen to the last episode because I, I don't think we could, I don't think we could cover it any more than we did then with no new information coming out. But uh, we'll roll into uh, the next thing, and that should be Halloween Horror Nights, and uh, I'm expecting it to start September 1st because last year it started September 2nd, and this year the first Friday is September 1st, so. Put it all together, and what do you got? You got September 1st. And Scary. right now, uh, we don't have actual dates, and that's why I'm just guessing on that. Uh, I did go back and look last year, the dates and uh, first tickets being released. All of that came on March 24th, so we're still a little bit away from when we should expect that further information. And uh, technically, the first house to be announced last year was in may with the universal monsters legends collide house but there I, there was weird that tickets went on sale before there was even a house does that that always happen i don't know i don't remember at this point uh yeah no no yeah it's uh tickets uh, dates and tickets always always have come first from what i remember but maybe it's like they they'll release a house announcement like very close by or a little mm -hmm. bit into it but either way at least this year we already have chucky announced yeah because that came right at the end of the event so uh it's you know it, everything's everything's gonna move in in time with halloween horror nights and we're gonna not talk about it until <laughs> it, it gets closer uh i know we what do you we, bet what there's an evil dead do you bet there's an evil dead house this year no I don't think they I, I think they truly did want it last year and they couldn't lock it down. But I don't I'm not sure. Oh, I'm not sure. I don't okay. I don't know what's coming out in terms of movies this year to know what they would do. Megan cross promotion with uh, I'm I'm hoping that their relationship with Netflix is kind of over. So that way I don't have to hear endless rumors about wanting a Wednesday house, uh, a show that has very little to no horror in it at all and would not translate well to a house, but I'm sure people will be screaming about wanting it. Um, I, I, they, I, they won't because that's already in on issues with Amazon and MGM and everything. And I know they, as of today, have finally renewed season two for Netflix. So, but I think it's too throwing in a universal into the mix too. I don't think it's possible, honestly. Um, and again, it, just doesn't need to happen, but I'm sure there will be people screaming out there wanting that. And uh, beyond that, I, I genuinely I have not been I've not been paying attention to what movies are expected to come this year besides Megan, which I think that Megan. is that's I a think Blum there's going to be a so. Megan house. Yeah, that's a Blum house. I I haven't seen the movie yet, but I can immediately imagine plenty. Of, I mean, she's basically wearing a mask, so it seems like such an easy get. And if it's going to be as big as they say, like with the. It's already had a pretty good weekend, so I don't know. I I could see that happening, but I think there was like a Blumhouse movie that was at the beginning of last year that we thought for sure it would happen, and it didn't. So I don't know. Yeah, I don't. I I'm trying to think back to it. Like the only big movie I remember from last year in terms of horror, besides like Halloween, which didn't yeah. get big, Awful. and there's Nope. And but they got the Jupiter's Landing out at Universal Studios Hollywood as part of the tram tour. So that's uh, yeah. I, I'm not. I'm not sure. I I should have looked more at what movies to expect this year. But we're not talking about Halloween Horror Nights. We're we're just briefly skimming over everything. Uh, but after try and Hall stop me. I I will stop you. I will stop you. The people demand it, uh, and the people demand that we finish up with this. So uh, I will mention then after Halloween Horror Nights is over, of course, we will roll right into the holidays at Universal Orlando. Should start somewhere around the second week of November and last all the way through the new year. 
and I would expect it to be the exact same event as it is every year with nothing nothing new, but it is a special time of the year to visit Universal, so always something to consider. And then the only other thing I want to mention, because this obviously was Universal Orlando based, uh, but Universal Studios Hollywood, we do have to mention, of course, Super Nintendo World is getting very close to opening, and uh, I know it's it's been a struggle for Hollywood because they were supposed to have their uh, their annual pass holder preview sign up to begin yesterday, and there was a lot of issues. Mm-hmm. So I think they're releasing an announcement in probably by the time this is live, uh, they will have the announcement of what's happening with that. But they had some struggles. But I mean, it's coming. And Rhino, I'll be honest, I. I don't know when I'll get to visit, but half of me was still like, do I need to buy an annual pass and try to get into previews in that? Like I was on the fence. Yeah, I have that because an annual pass is not very expensive still out there. It's like 200 or something Two, it's in the it's in the very affordable range for out of state people. And I was like, because eh. I'm like, I feel like I'd want to go when I go more than one time. And I feel like it'll be busy no matter when you go. So it's like, I don't know. I've thought about it because I still I have a Disneyland annual pass that's good until the end of April. And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. There's a concert out there in April that I want to see. And I was like, Super Nintendo would be open and it's before my annual pass expires. So it's like, why not get a why not get a universal one while we're at it? Just make it a whole kaleidoscope of things. It's it's tough. And uh, Super Nintendo World opening officially on February 17th. 2023 out there of course with the mario kart attraction you'll have power-up bands so that way you can do all the interactive elements in the land and i am you know they don't have the yoshi ride and they don't have donkey kong coming with it but uh, they've got they've got the core attraction and i am so excited to get out there and see it and the cafe the food right yeah the food is what i care yeah because i want to see all the food too yeah it, it's going to be more it's not going to be as fun as the food in Japan because, uh, know. you know, it's we we need to be more basic in America. But that's that is what it is with it. So but there still will be uh, food. There'll be plenty of merchandise for it. It will. It, it's still going to be Super Nintendo World, just a, a bit smaller version of it. And yeah, that's the hard part is if you're choosing right now to go to California like, I mean, I guess you could choose to go after Super Nintendo World opens, but I mean, they're they're like walloping with the start of all of the 100th year anniversary of Disney stuff at Disneyland on the 27th mm-hmm. of January. And then a couple weeks later, then you have Super Nintendo World opening up. And then a couple weeks after that, you have Runaway Railway opening up at Disneyland like. It, and their it, parade comes back, too, I think. Yeah, or yeah. is that in January? Something oh. else happens in February, too. I think the parade was February. I don't remember off the okay. top of my head. Fe- the, toward the end of Fe- it's like February twenty something. Yeah, is that? It, but yeah, yeah. The, and the point stands. It's just like there is so much happening that, like, but, at least for us on our coast, it's like, how do you decide when to go? That's why I'm saying April. I'm thinking April because everything, all that stuff, should be open by then. So it should be like easy. I don't yeah. know. I don't know. I, and for me, obviously, traveling is a lot harder for me now with the new edition, but I, I'm, I'm expecting I will hopefully be out there in like summertime and be able to get my fix of everything. I would love to travel earlier, but I, I don't I don't I don't know. I, I would probably break out in hives every day just worrying yeah. about what's happening back at home. And uh, if it's, you know, with my track record of getting sick anytime we get on an airplane <laughs> just continues yeah. to come true. I don't need hives and another illness. So it's probably just safer if I don't travel right away. But we'll we'll have to wait and see. But super exciting for Universal Studios Hollywood with Super Nintendo World opening up. Something not to sleep on. Yes, we're going to get it in a big way at Epic Universe when that opens up in a couple of years. But I, I mean, it's like it's a preview. It's yeah. like a preview. It's like a little preview. It's exactly. It's a taste where it's not going to ruin what we have because we're just going to get a a better version of it. It's a nice, the dipping your toes in the water with it. Kind of like also, the same way if you do Wizarding World out there, you're dipping your toes in and then you get the real deal when you come to Orlando. Yeah. Well, also the thing about out there being on the side of the mountain is like, you do the hippogriff ride and it's like, what a gorgeous view you have out there. But they also have um, the, the, like I said earlier, the, um, the secret life of pets attractions there. Now they're Jurassic 
um, Park uh, River Adventure is now the Jurassic World one. So it's got some fun, cool additions out there. So, like, if you haven't been in a couple of years, I think now is the time to to go. Yeah. And, uh, you know, just like with Universal Orlando, if you want help planning a Universal Studios Hollywood vacation, Dreams Unlimited Travel. They'll try to help do you we out do that? however they can. <laughs> What's that? Did they do that? I don't know. <laughs> They'll help you out. They'll help you out. They're experts at per- they're experts at helping you plan the perfect Universal and Disney vacation. That's what I know. And it's a little trickier out there because they're th- not everything's connected the same way. Yeah. I know in Hollywood, so it's like th- that area. If you think you're an expert here, you might want to talk to somebody because out there it's a like a little bit of a different ball game. Yeah. It, Truly, truly is. But okay, before we move on to the rail station, I do want to mention some discounts right now because that is, well, discounts and special offers because that might be able to, like, you know, inch you towards actually coming to Universal. If you were on the fence about it, there's some deals you might be able to take advantage of right now. A big one, of course, is get two days free with a two park, two day ticket. So uh, you get four days for the price of two and you you can't really beat that deal and the base pricing on that starts out at around from 216 dollars and then it goes up from there of course that that would be the the cheapest it could possibly be you can add volcano bay onto that for 35 dollars more if you want uh it really you know at the end of the day no matter how you you look at it you're getting four days for the price of two so you you know get you get you into extending your vacation just a little bit longer potentially just because you get you get that those extra couple days in there and they're almost always running some sort of special ticket deal you know sometimes it can be even more it can be get three days free so uh two days free i think is still a good deal and if you can take advantage of it why not go ahead and do that there's also a, a hotel and ticket package right now save 25 percent on a five night hotel and ticket package uh, this is for this spring and you will enjoy uh, five nights at cabana bay beach resort or aventura hotel which of course those parks uh the perks of staying at those hotel include getting early park admission and uh on top of that you with the ticket package you get a three park five day park to park vacation package promo ticket and that includes access to universal studios florida islands of adventure and volcano bay now the dates for travel on these are february 21st 2023 through may 26 2023 and the blockout dates for it are march 31st 2023 through april 15th 2023 that's at your busiest spring break time period so you're not really going to want to be there anyways when it's at the busiest that might be the only time you can travel but trust me it's it's always it's always busy uh but you've got a little bit of wiggle room there with uh basically the whole start of march to experience mardi gras things and then uh the the aftermath from the middle of april through basically the start of summer with memorial day that you could take advantage of this deal it is it is for sunday to thursday travel only so not your busiest times on the weekend that's that's not included but it is a way to save money on your vacation so definitely consider that but rhino we're going to move on to our final our final part of this show and our only news story of the day and uh, this is right up your alley because it's trains i love trains you do you do. And uh, Universal. love LA. You do love LA too. And I love LA. We all love LA. Uh, <laughs> Universal is making a new step forward in getting a sundial station. Sun, sundial station? Sundial? What's that? You mean Indiana Jones? No. <laughs> Listen, I copy and pasted it. <laughs> and I'm now like, oh, did fantastic. It, did it autocorrect a copy and paste is that possible uh universal's making a new step forward to get (laughs) i'm sorry i screwed myself up there to get a new (laughs) rail station near epic universe so 
I'm going to read a lot of stuff off a press release, and then we'll talk about it here. Uh, Universal Orlando's Right Rail Coalition and Universal Orlando Resort yesterday announced a significant progress towards realizing the vision of commuter rail connectivity throughout Central Florida, one of the fastest growing regions in the nation, with the creation of the Shingle Creek (laughs) Transit Utility Community Development District. Say that six times fast, Rhino. No. Repeat it once for me. (laughs) Repeat it once. (laughs) Simpson, Simpson, <laughs> couldn't even get shingle. I couldn't even it. get shingle. I can't even get shingle. Couldn't get shingle. It. You tried. You tried. Single cruisers, train track. Boom. It's a, now it's like a new app where you date only train travelers. Yeah. Big. Oh, I'm sure it'll exist one day now that you mentioned it. (laughs) (laughs) So this limited purpose public entity will plan, finance, construct, operate, own and maintain a new Orange County Convention Center sun rail station, not a sundial station, a sun Mm. rail station, uh, which advances a key priority for sun rail, the Sunshine Corridor Program. The program creates a commuter rail line between the Orlando International Airport and the Orange County Convention Center, expanding SunRail and connecting Central Florida communities across the region. When complete, it will provide important regional connectivity for residents, including more than 100,000 local workers in the International Drive area and visitors, too. And most importantly, the corridor connects residents and visitors to Brightline, the privately run inner city rail line currently serving Miami, Fort Lauderdale, West Palm Beach, and coming in 2023 to the Orlando International Airport. So once it Mm. connects, once you have Brightline connecting from Miami all the way up to the Orlando International Airport, then the next step forward, of course, is getting people from Orlando International Airport to the convention center, center area. And that opens up all of International Drive as well as Epic Universe. A really, a really big step. And, you know, Disney was supposed to be getting this and having Mm. that connectivity to them. But Universal is getting it. And that's uh, that's it's pretty massive. But I mean, it is Disney. It's opening it up to that Disney area. This truly does open it up to this entire sector in that area. Mm -hmm. And, you know, International Drive Convention Center, you're also very close to SeaWorld as well too like you there's there's a lot going on in that area it's not always our favorite but i think it is important to get people there as easily as possible oh yeah less cars on the road trying to go down there that sounds great yeah because i drive is a is riddled with cars and traffic so if you can if you can eliminate some of that perfect yeah no, i completely agree yeah try try driving it at like six or seven o'clock at night <laughs> and uh, just just have fun. Have fun sitting there waiting and yeah. waiting and waiting uh, in terms of, uh, you know, quotes about this. We'll do one from uh, John Sprawls, executive vice president and chief administrative officer of Universal Parks and Resorts, said we are one step closer to creating a multi-directional commuter rail system that benefits our entire region. The new Sun Rail Corridor and Convention Center Station will make it easier for residents to get to work, the airport, and to the places they love. And it will enable business growth within the International Drive area and across the region. What a great quote. Uh, Universal Orlando (laughs) will pledge 13 acres of land to the district at no cost to tax payers to be used for the convention center station with intermodal capability and a substantial section of rail corridor based on its investment in epic universe universal will also support the district's financing of up to 125 million in private activity bonds to be used for the fun rail to use to fund the rail corridor and convention center station, which should allow the district to issue bonds on more favorable terms, support the operation and maintenance of the station. So there is no cost to orange County taxpayers currently estimated at $2 million annually. Good for taxes. And along with its partners in the Orlando right rail coalition contribute to and collectively support the district's guarantee of 13 million in annual ticket sales for the sunshine corridor, the current estimated yearly operating costs for the corridor. So universal, they are, would we, should they be called the puppet masters with all this? I feel like they should. I mean, It's so smart because essentially it's like them not investing in just themselves, but investing in the city that they currently operate in. So I was like, that seems like a great that's just good press all around, I feel like. Yeah, 
Well, no, no, for sure. So it's definitely going to open up uh, Epic Universe in a bigger way. And hopefully what it inevitably does is it really helps make things even uh, better with Universal and the the city of Orlando, because at some point in time, too, we are going to have to figure out what the actual true way they want to get people back and forth from the main campus at Universal Orlando and Epic Universe. Because they, you know, the idea is that you're not just going to go to one part. You're not going to go to Epic Universe or you're going to go to Universal. It's still all it's it's all Universal Orlando. So uh, there's going to have to be something that connects it in a fast and easy way. And uh, hopefully, hopefully the more the more good press Universal can get with Orlando, the easier it will be to transport people back and forth. And uh, then our lives will be easier. But I mean, well, not our lives. Yeah. For our lives, I assume we will just park at Epic Universe if we want to go to Epic <laughs> Universe. Drive. Yeah. Universal if we want to go to Standard Universal. But that's just my guess. We'll see. We'll see. But uh, very exciting. Uh, the future is Universal Orlando. Is it not, Rhino? Is that fair to say? Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, we'll we'll I, make sure to pull that quote with you, Jesse. You can be side by side by with John Sprawls. What is the it, undiscovered says, country? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's uh it truly is going to be an exciting 2023 for Universal Orlando. And obviously we are all waiting for Epic Universe coming down the road, but uh that doesn't mean we should just put off not going to Universal. I think I think this will be a huge year to go, whether you're hitting the summertime so you can experience what's new here, uh, new at Universal, as well as what's new at Disney, whether you wait for Halloween time frame so that way you can experience the awesomeness of Halloween Horror Nights with everything else that's new. Uh, you, you have a lot of options, and maybe you want to try to sneak in before everything gets a little insane and come during that Mardi Gras time period. That is That is up to you. That's whatever you want to do. But I think I think really, unless you kind of like hit that time period right when nothing's happening right before summer of, uh, you know, so this summer of 2023, I think I think that's probably one of only the weaker times to go. But maybe you got savings from that vacation package and it's impossible to turn it up and or turn it down and. For all you know, you can show up and in the villain con attraction could be in in technical rehearsals. So no, no, we don't know yet. We don't know yet, but it could could be happening. Could be happening. Don't start asking us when it's going to start. I don't. You know, we don't soft opening <laughs> yeah. and technical rehearsals. Uh, we are not the ones for for that information. There are, there are better people out there that can help you with that. But we can try to help you as much as possible. One plan in a Universal Orlando vacation if we can. And if not, we're going to shove you off over on Dreams Unlimited Travel. Because before we go, I do have to mention, of course, once again, our friends at Dreams Unlimited Travel. Because they are experts at helping people plan vacations. We we talk about this stuff, but they're, they're literally daily just helping people plan the best vacations there. So if you want their help, you can always reach out by getting a free no obligation quote over at dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. And as always, if you want to support us even more beyond booking your vacations through Dreams Unlimited Travel, if you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, hit the thumbs up, leave comments, questions, video suggestions, and we will check all of that out. And if you're a listener to this show, please subscribe wherever you listen. And if it's possible to leave us a rating and review, do that. And always helps more people be able to find us. But uh, Rhino, that's it. Our first episode of 2023 in the books. And I feel like uh, for not doing this, for a month that I, I wasn't uh, as all over the place as I expected myself to be. Sure. Okay. Yeah. I <laughs> no. I, I, yeah, got, I, yeah. I, mean, I got a little <laughs> mush mouth right at the end. It was starting like I'm all the spit starting to like uh, you know boil up in the sides of the mouth, and I'm uh, that's when I start mispronouncing words, saying the wrong words. Also, it's a chillier day here in Orlando right now, so uh, that means, of course, my air conditioner is not kicking on in my house, and I'm oh, starting to actively sweat more and more. It's getting very uncomfortable. I'm very uncomfortable. But uh, I have an intense fan going right now. So. <laughs> that's I I will be opening my office door as soon as I'm done here and I will let all the cool air just just take over all the warm air. 
science, all the warm air is going to push out and all that cool air will be able to to make its way slowly in. But uh, Rhino, thank you so much for sitting here and talking to me about Universal Orlando. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Yes, yes, it is indeed. And thank you, everyone out there, for taking the time to watch or listen. We truly do appreciate it, and we hope that we can help you plan the best vacation to Universal Orlando in 2023. So stick with us through the rest of the year. Uh, we will be keeping you up to date as much as we possibly can. But that's going to do it for this week's episode of the Disunplugged Universal Edition. We'll see you again real soon with another episode. But remember, we still haven't changed the name. Thank you.